Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's video. We are going to be doing my Q&A, my first ever Q&A. And let me tell you, when I put out the call for questions for this video, you guys really came through. You really came through. I was having a bit of a rubbish week with YouTube. It just wasn't, it wasn't a good week as far as YouTube is concerned. And so I put out the Q&A. A few of you have been asking me or suggesting that I do one. It's been like, oh, you know, a, a year and a few months since I started YouTube. I've never done a Q&A before. I've done get ready with, get ready with me's where I've kind of talked a little bit about a couple of bits of my life but nothing like this where you guys can ask anything that you want to i really fully plan to answer every single question but i've got no idea how long that will take so i'll just do my best and we'll just see how it goes we'll see how long my battery lasts feel free to leave at any point but i just want to say thank you so much for all your questions it was just so funny to me because i've always kind of felt like on youtube we follow the people that we'd be friends with in real life we follow the people we relate to we follow the people we like or that we find funny or that we just warm to and we support each other and these questions just really hit home on that for me because these were the questions there was like i was a little bit nervous like what are they gonna ask me is there gonna be anything that i don't want to talk about or they wouldn't want to talk about is there gonna be anything rude or inappropriate and it was just like all the questions that i would have asked all of the stuff that i think you might want to talk about or that i would want to talk about and it just really showed me that you guys are literally like my online family and you just think the same way as me you've got the same personality the same sort of sense of humor you like the same things you want to know the same things and it was just really a really lovely warming thing to read through all your questions so thank you so much and without further ado because this video is going to be three hours long let's crack open a drink so satisfying and let's get on with the questions so i'm just going to go through on my community posts and and answer them in order hopefully we get through them all but let's see by the way i've put my neck out this morning kind of i don't know what's wrong with it i was just literally going to the toilet tmi so the first question is from melanie who says the necklace you never give this away melanie where have you been melanie i have actually answered you on the community post where I asked the questions because I'm very confused. I've literally asked, answered every single person who's asked me about my necklace and that is a lot of people. I've also got a full blurb about my necklace in the description box, like it's just on every video now because so many people have asked me and I'm really sorry, I'm useless. It's no help because this was a gift. These are actually two necklaces and both were gifts from my husband. Um, so that's why I wear it in every single video because it is incredibly special to me. So this part on its own, this is um, a picture of the moon and it says on it, one moon around the world. And he bought me this, so the chain and this part when we first got together because he worked away a lot. Um, you know, he travels a huge amount in the winter and he kind of bought me this as like a token just to say, you know, we're always together we're always under under the same moon and we can look at the moon and think of each other and know that the other one is still thinking of us even if we're apart and then this part he bought me when i had my daughter so this is her little fingerprint her newborn little fingerprint and then it has her name and date of birth on the back of it engraved and then on the front is her birthstone which is a diamond this bit is eight years old and this bit is like nearly five years old so I don't think you're going to be able to find exactly this, so apologies, but that is the story behind it. So Lisa asks, do your friends have a love of makeup like you do? I find that I'm the only one among my friends. The, the short answer is no, not really. No one is like I am about makeup. Most of my friends like it, they buy makeup, you know, they even like, you know, higher end stuff, but no one is like obsessed like I am makeup addict, a makeup hoarder, whatever you want to call me, um, nothing like I am. They'll sometimes ask me questions obviously because I know about stuff and I use a lot more than the average person. But no, no one is like I am. Nikki asks, what part of skin or makeup routine do you secretly think is rubbish? Now, I wouldn't say that there's anything that is a secret because I say these things to you guys all the time. The things that spring to mind are fake lashes. I don't have an issue with them on anybody but me. Like I think they look amazing on lots of other people 
I can't find any that I like on me. I do have very good natural lashes, so maybe that's why. Maybe just haven't found the right pair yet. But yeah, I don't know, I don't get them. They don't look good on me. So, but that isn't a secret. I say it all the time. Lizzie asks, if you had your own makeup line, what would be the first product you'd launch and what would you name it? So it would be easily would be a foundation. That is my favorite bit of makeup. It's the bit that to me makes the biggest difference. I love foundations. I have to try every foundation that comes out. You guys know this. It would have to be a foundation. It would be full coverage. It would be dewy. It would have no SPF so it would photograph beautifully under flash. It would be at least 12 hours of wear. It wouldn't go into fine lines or exaggerate texture. It would have like 60 shades with all different undertones. It would be the greatest foundation of all time. Name wise, I've got no clue. It would have to be something like inclusive or it's like something that would mean, you know, it's for everybody. So let's come up with a name together. Because that's probably what I would do, to be fair. I would ask you guys, because you have all the answers. Deb says, what is the best under eye setting powder for dry and mature skin? I'm really struggling to find one that doesn't look. So 100% the, the best one I've ever used is the Huda Baking Powder. That is my favorite one. It doesn't feel dry, doesn't look dry. Obviously I don't have necessarily mature skin. Mine is like early signs of aging, so I can't promise you it will work on very mature skin because I haven't tried it. But that would be the one that for me is my absolute favorite. Jade says, I'm so interested to know about your half heart looking tattoo on the side of your hand. So I designed this tattoo on the side of my hand. What it is, is it is a mother and daughter symbol. If I show you up close, this side is very faded. And the reason why is that when you get tattoos in this area, you have to have like two or three passes. So you basically have to have the tattoo done two or three times because the skin on your hand is like so tough or it, it regenerates so much quicker than, and obviously you're using your hands all the time. So you have to have it like done. So I had mine done twice, but I've decided to leave it. I didn't really want it done a third time. I like the fact that this side is fainter. Um, but yeah, so the, the main heart shape is actually um, a mother child symbol so I got this just after I had my daughter and it then has some Morse code which is her name and also my nickname for her in Morse code and it also has the sign language symbol for I love you and it also has a little moon which relates back to the story I've already told you we kind of always talk about the moon in our, in our family so I have a little moon down here as well Mital says how do you balance being a mum a professional and a youtuber all at the same time how do you de-stress deal with anxiety can you share some of your tips so yes you guys know I've talked before that I suffer a lot with anxiety and um, stress and I've had real issues with migraines particularly around um, the end of last year when I was really struggling with my job. So I have definitely found lots of really good ways that I personally have massively benefited from. And I think the main thing is just to find what works for you. So there's all di we're all very different. So I think just trying lots of different things. But the few things that for me have made the biggest difference. The first thing was ASMR. I don't know if you guys know what ASMR is, but a quick Google or search on YouTube and you'll get millions of ASMR videos. If you ever have gone to the hairdressers and when they brush your hair, it makes you go all tingly. The point of ASMR is to give you that feeling. It's to help you sleep, it's to relax you, it's to help you feel um, less stress and anxiety. And that's what it does for me. So I, if I'm trying struggling with sleep, which is a huge thing for me when I'm anxious, I have massive insomnia. So I will put my headphones on and listen to ASMR videos to help myself get to sleep. I like to listen to it when I'm in the bath that's the ultimate relaxation dream. That really helps me. Offloading to my husband massively helps me. I talk to him a lot, have a little rant with my husband um, and that makes a massive difference. The other thing I find if like, I'm not very good at sort of taking time out from my kids 
Like if they're here and they're home, my husband's home, I do not want to do anything, go somewhere, take up some time for myself. I'm really bad at that, but that is huge. Even if it's to go to the hairdressers or go to the gym, sometimes I'll just say to my husband, I'm just going to go around the shops and I'll, and I'll just go. And even if it's just, just for an hour, I'll just drive off, listen to some really loud music in my car, have a walk around the shops, try some clothes on, even if I don't spend any money, just that time where it's quiet and with your own thoughts and your own freedom, with no responsibility, just for an hour or so, that makes a huge difference for me. So those are kind of the few things I really rely on. Pollyanna says, how did you meet your husband? Did you go to college and what's your profession? That's actually three questions, Pollyanna, but because you're so beautiful and lovely, I will let you off. So I met my husband at work, very, very quick and easy answer to that one. Did you go to college? I did go to university. I didn't do a full degree. I did an HND. Some of you will know that I was a full-time swimmer for the first part of my life. I retired when I was like 21 um, and so I wasn't able to do a full degree. So I did an HND. I did a lot of like studying while I was competing in a way on training camps. I spent a few months of the year in Australia. So I wasn't able to do a full degree and actually manage all of that. So I did an HND at university, which is like the equivalent of the first year of a degree. Um, and you can carry on onto the second year if you want, but I never really wanted to. I was kind of happy with that. So my real job, my day job is a performance lifestyle advisor. So I work with Olympic and professional athletes and um, supporting their personal and professional development it's to ensure that they are able to perform at the best of their abilities while still making sure that they are like a whole person that they're not just this athlete they have outside experiences they develop themselves through education and work experience and they have this whole portfolio of experience that they can take with them when they retire i adore my job i live for it i love working with athletes and in elite sport it's very hard to explain in a quick amount of time but hopefully i've kind of done that in some way so kj love and beauty says what's your skincare routine what are your holy grail skincare products etc so i have a whole skincare routine video which i will link down below for you because obviously it is going to take me too long to go through all of that um, but yeah, so I will link that down below for you, my whole skincare routine, all of my Holy Grail products, but I love drugstore uh, skincare products. I think there's amazing affordable skincare out there. So I will link all of that down below. Ellie says, how did you get started? What equipment did you buy? Can I show us, a, can I give you like a studio tour? How did I afford to buy the products, etc.? So um, I do have, again, a video on my first year of YouTube, how to get started, all of that stuff. So again, Ellie, I'll link all of that down below for you. I think the main thing to do is to just really stick within whatever your budget is. Everybody is different. Everybody has different means and different budget. For me, I was really unsure if this was gonna be for me, if I was gonna enjoy it. So I decided I didn't wanna invest a huge amount of money only for like maybe to do it for a few weeks, who knew? So I decided I was gonna spend 200 pounds setting up everything and that was, you know, my ring light, I bought like um, some frames for backdrops and then like my table, that I, my desk that I sit at, I literally got from Facebook for a fiver um, and all that kind of stuff. My husband bought my camera for me as a present. My dad bought my this backdrop for me for Christmas. Um, and so everything else has just kind of either been gifts or I've bought along the way. I've literally just invested in upgraded software now, but as you as may or may not know, I'm now monetized, so I am making money from my channel. So I put all of that back in. So I'm no longer really spending my own money. I'm spending what I make from my channel on products from my channel. Obviously I am a makeup addict, a makeup hoarder, a makeup lover. So I do buy a lot of makeup anyway, but if I want to buy something just for my channel, it comes out of like what I make from my channel. And that's kind of how I budget. But as I said, there's a lot more information in that video and I will link it down below. That was kind of my first year and all my tips and tricks in there. The Alpha Omega Star says, how do I keep up with all that makeup products while making sure you don't overspend? How do you manage it, etc." So 
I kind of, I guess, answered it in the previous question, but I think the main thing is just being really strict on yourself. I wasn't good at that at first. I got very carried away, very excited, wanting to review everything for you guys. But I think now I make really conscious decisions and really thought through decisions. Would I buy this if I wasn't on YouTube? But ultimately, just bear in mind that you have your own budget. You know, don't try and be Tarty or Jacqueline and, you know, they have different budgets to us and they get given a lot of stuff. So I just think keep it realistic to what your budget is. Don't get yourself in trouble. It's really not worth it. Spend within your means. You don't need to keep buying everything. If you've got, you know, more to your channel, more to you, rely on that rather than relying on buying everything that comes out. I've got a big list of people who ask me like how I got started on YouTube, how I got into makeup. So that is kind of one story for me. I always love makeup. I always was wanting to buy MAC makeup when I was at school. But as I said before, I was a swimmer. I was always either about to get in a pool or just getting out of a pool my whole life. So I never really got to wear like full beat glam. I never really got to, you know, practice or train as like a makeup artist or anything like that. Cause I was always swimming, always away, always in the water. Um, so when I retired like t at 21, that was kind of when I started to really focus on makeup and love makeup a bit more and just experiment, buy more of it and really loved it. And that kind of stepped up another notch when I had my daughter and I was on maternity leave. And, um, you know, I put a lot of weight on, didn't really look or feel like myself. Um, and I also lost a lot of my time, you know, when you become a mother, suddenly everything, every minute of your day is about somebody else. And so makeup became for me like therapy, like my time, you know, if she was asleep, I would go and do my makeup and I started to watch YouTube and really loved it. But I kind of felt like as time went by, I was kind of missing like the old school YouTube with reviews and hauls and normal people in normal scenarios. People more like my age, more normal people, not professionals. And yeah, I just kind of felt like a lot of it was no longer like realistic to me. So I just kind of felt like, why not give it a go? You know, rather than sitting there and saying, there's not this, I miss that. There's where's this, I, I want someone like this. I just felt like, do you know what? Do it yourself. Carolina says, what kind of makeup is out of your comfort zone? So that is easy, bright colors. I literally never do bright colors or crazy colors. Shauna says, tell us some things about where you live, like weather, scenery, that sort of thing. So I live in the country. I've always pretty much lived in the country. I grew up in Devon, which is the full on countryside sticks, nothing but sheep. Um, I then moved to the like to the Bath area. Um, I spent a few years living in central London, um, which was just it was fun, and I you know I did a lot, had a lot of experiences, but I was probably never going to live there for a long time because I am a full-on country girl. At the moment, it's really sunny outside. It's very quiet. Lots of trees. Very little traffic. I live in a really small little village that literally has a little corner shop a pub and a village school and that is it. Do I care about the royal goings on? Not really, I quite like seeing photos of the royal family like most people. Um, I can't say I like stalk them on social media or anything like that but I do like um, you know seeing their weddings and babies being born and all that kind of stuff but um, I'm not huge like news reader or follower particularly. Um, how many tattoos do I have? So I have one, two, three, six. Height, weight, and age. <sighs> Height, I think I'm five foot six or seven. I think I spent my whole life thinking I was five foot eight, but I'm not. I think I'm five, six or seven, but I can't tell you the last time I weighed or measured myself. Weight, I'm really, really not sure. I think I'm about, last time I checked, I was about 65 kilos but I don't really weigh myself. I um, weight train a lot, do lift a lot of weights, so weight for me is kind of irrelevant because I'm quite muscly, so um, yeah, weight doesn't mean much to me. And age, I am 34, yes, you are correct. Will I ever show my family in a video? No, I don't think I will. It's hard to say, you know, you say never say never, but I really don't see, I have no 
appeal to me to show my kids particularly maybe i might do a video with my husband it's not really his thing but i can't see me ever putting my kids i mean you guys have seen like how toxic youtube can be and i just i feel like if i ever had my kids in a video and there was a single off comment i would immediately just delete my whole channel nicole says have you ever met any of the royal family yes i have um i was actually really lucky to go to buckingham palace like we me, my husband and i were invited to one of the royal garden parties i wouldn't say i personally wouldn't say that i met anyone other than the duke of kent because uh, to me, if you've met someone, you have to have had a conversation, like shook their hands to have properly met them. So the only person I, the only royal I would say was Prince Edward, who is the Duke of Kent. Um, but obviously the Queen was there and I have seen the royals at events a lot of times, but I wouldn't, I would only class, you know, if I've spoken to them and, and shaken their hand, I would have actually met them. My husband has met every single royal there is um just because of his job he worked at the olympics in london so he met kate and william and harry there and he has met um princess anne um and sophie of wessex is actually the patron of the sport he works with so yeah he's just like might as well move into the palace michelle says how many children do you have and what made you start youtube so i guess i've answered the youtube question but i have two children my daughter is four and she just started school and then my little boy who is two and a half angie and liz says if you could repurchase one thing what would it be now i run through i ran through these questions before this video just to sort of you know have a think about anything that needed some time and this was very easy for me i was immediately like long commerce you're big this current moment that is the one thing that there is nothing else that comes close to for me nicola says would you save or splurge on the following items concealer mascara foundation primer and moisturizer now other than moisturizer my personal thing is i would splurge on all of those those are all products that i personally just like to splurge on but if i was to give you advice I would say to save on concealer, mascara and moisturiser because I think there are very good affordable drugstore options. My ultimate favourite in all those categories is high-end but there are fantastic concealers, there are fantastic mascaras, there are fantastic moisturisers that are affordable. Nicola also says if you could pick any three makeup products to use day in day out what would you choose? Again this is really easy for me because this is quite realistic to my life, that is quite often the case for me and in that case it would be mascara foundation and bronzer Melissa says that she has really long lashes lucky you a mascara is my thing but it always ends up under my eyes or flakes halfway through the day can you suggest any that stay put maybe i mean i would definitely say that long commerce your big does that i've never had any issues with it transferring or flaking at all but if you do have oily skin, I know that that can cause that issue that I wouldn't have as I don't have oily skin. So I would really suggest trying the Lancome Monsieur Big Waterproof um, because that should hopefully counter that if you do have oily skin or if you're just living in a really hot, humid place or something like that. Mizu Bird says, who are some of your favorite YouTubers and or channels? good question so obviously we know i love mel thompson i also love some really random channels one of my absolute favorites is just jack no just jack one of my absolute favorites is jack mate he is like, i don't even know how to describe him it's almost like a comedian he does lots of things like roasting so he'll you know roast a big youtuber or like a situation he does like you know five funny things about such and such he did a video i think the first one that caught my eye was a video about love island and just like literally ripping it to pieces and he is so funny like absolutely hilarious I could watch him all day. He just makes me laugh out loud. He is one of my ultimate favorites if I just need a laugh. 
I also really love the Bucket List family. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Bucket List family, but they are a family who have been traveling all over the world together for the last couple of years. Um, and I love their videos. So uplifting and inspiring and just a gorgeous family and I love watching them. So Bea or Bayer, I'm sorry, I'm not 100% sure how you pronounce your name. How do you balance all of it? Family, house chores, YouTube work, social media, social life. I find it very hard to balance, especially growing a small channel. I have always been an incredibly well-organized person. Like before my current job, I was a PA. My whole life has been about being organized. The main thing is knowing when I'm filming and what I'm filming for the week, when I'm working, because my work now, especially now that I left my sort of the biggest bit of my job, my big contract that was kind of my steady every week hours. Now I'm kind of picking up bits here and there and doing all different little you know contracts here and there um so i just really need to know what i'm working where i am where my time is um and all of that kind of stuff so i think the main thing for, you, for me is to just be very organized and prepared i plan my videos weeks in advance if i have like a half a day where i can film like this morning my daughter's in school my son is at nursery my daughter's only in school till one because she's only I'm just starting so I know that I have basically from 10 till 1 today to myself and I will film for that entire time try and get as many videos as I can done and then I'll edit in the evenings once my kids have gone to bed I sit on the sofa with my husband chilling out editing on my laptop um, and yeah that's that's kind of how I do it I make sure that I am weeks ahead that I have always like six to eight videos in the bank so that if it's a really busy week if I get sick, if I've got a lot of work that week or anything like that, I always have videos ready to go and that makes me feel less stressed. Candace says, what is your favorite book, movie, TV show? Oh, Candace, this is probably the hardest question. Just to pick one is incredibly hard. I'm always reading, I have my Kindle and that is like my happy time. Again, going back to Mita's question, um, I like to sit in the garden with my Kindle and a cup of coffee and I I'm in heaven. That is my happy, happy place. So um, yeah, I read all of the time. Probably my all time favorite books. I'd have to go with Harry Potter's. I've read them like seven or eight times each. I, I love them. I still love them now. And soon I'll start reading them to my kids um, and it will go full circle. My favorite movie, I have, I mean, I'm weird. I have two extremes as far as the movies I like. I love rom-coms and I love terrifying movies that stop me sleeping at night so it's very hard to choose between those genres i guess the one there's two films that i'm obsessed with i've watched a hundred times and those are the notebook and about time about time is very similar to the notebook if you haven't seen it i think it's lesser known it's a, an, a british version of the notebook basically i'm obsessed with both of them i've watched them both a hundred times each um, so those are probably my favourites. On the scary movie side, I love The Shining. I loved Seven. That is one of my all-time favourite movies. So yeah, I really like scary movies that like have a real story, that are really gripping. TV show is even harder than those two, I think, because again, it just depends what I'm watching at the time. One of my all-time favourites would have been Gavin and Stacey. I just love it. It's just got everything. It's funny. It's romantic it's shocking it's just got everything sex in the city would again i've watched it the whole series and both films eight times each i'm always going around at the moment the current one that is on now would be game of thrones love it so lisa um again is asking about my tattoos so i have six they're all incredibly meaningful they are all personally designed by me i have a rose that um, marked the first time i swam for england so it's like an english rose the english swimming rose that i had um, i have one that is a line from my favorite song obviously we talked about this one i have a uh, quote on my leg that is for my husband and i have my husband's heartbeat um on my leg so yeah all of my tattoos are just very personal very meaningful i like to have them in really weird languages like i talked about earlier that this is morse code one of the tattoo on my back is in Devihi, i think you say it which is the language spoken in the maldives i like just to have them private and personal so no one else is going to be able to see it and know what it means if you make sense Norberto says, why hardly any beauty YouTubers talk about Cryolan makeup? 
So my short answer, I mean, I can't answer for everybody, obviously I can only answer for myself. And that is literally before your message, I had never heard of it. I had to actually Google it when I saw your question. So I think that's a short answer. I just don't think it's as commonly known or commonly used or commonly available. It is for those of you who don't know, like a professional, more like stage makeup brand. So I guess that's why, you know, you're not gonna walk into Boots or Debenhams and see Cryoland. So I guess that is the reason why. I mean, that's the reason I wasn't aware of it. So maybe that's my best guess. Emily says, how did you meet your husband? Which I've already answered. Any advice for a single girl doing her own thing? The pressure to get a boyfriend is so much. I hear you, Emily. My first thing is, is that from your photo, you look really young. And I think the main thing is, just don't feel any pressure. The mo most important thing is that you meet as many people as possible and have relationships and experiences with people, get to know people, make really good friends. To me, the best relationships come out of someone who is like your best friend and that you just love spending time with. And that just comes with time. I feel like we changed so much over the years and the person that you are with at 15, I know for some people they stay with their childhood sweetheart their whole life and that is incredibly lucky. But for a lot of us, you know, we change and we're shaped by our experiences. And the main thing is just to meet as many people as you can, you know, choose in life who you're attracted to, who makes you laugh, what kind of personality you appreciate and you want in your life and who uplifts you and just learn all that stuff about yourself. And so that way, when you meet that person who is your it, your everything, you'll know because they'll be all of those things. That's really all I can say. No one has like the secret for meeting your soulmate. You just, you'll find them when the time is right. That's how I truly, truly believe in that. So Sean says, do I use Botox or fillers? Why or why not? Are there any special treatments I recommend for skin? I don't have any Botox or fillers. There's not a huge reason. I guess to me, no one I know has ever had any of that stuff. It's never really been on my radar before I started watching YouTube when I know obviously a lot of people do have those things. But for me, I'm, you know, I'm not really worried about aging. I'm not really worried about lines and things like that. So it's just never occurred to me. Um, or really been on my radar to, to consider, to be honest. Tiziana says, a brand yes, and a brand not. So I guess a brand yes for me at the moment, I feel like Too Faced is killing the game. Everything I pick up from them, I'm loving. A brand not, I feel like Benefit for me is very hit and miss, like either life-changing or can live without it. So I guess that's kind of, a bit of an erratic brand for me. Naomi says, what do I like to watch, binge watch on TV and Netflix? I don't have Netflix, I need to get it in my life. I don't have a smart TV and I'm not really into watching stuff on my laptop. Um, but yeah, I guess so Sex and the City, Game of Thrones, The Waking Dead, like I watch millions of TV series. The Handmaid's Tale, love it. Kat says, what's your personal favorite content to film on YouTube and favorite content to watch? So I love filming stuff like this, chatty stuff, get ready with me's. Um, I don't watch as much beauty YouTube at the moment. I guess if you're making it all of the time, then the last thing you kind of want to do is then watch more. Um, I, I watch a lot of ASMR. I really love true crime stuff, like crime investigations and things like that. Kitty says, did you prefer the milk duds or the whatchamacallit from the stuff that Mel sent me in our box swap. 100, easy question, whatchamacallit, obsessed. I asked my husband when I was reading through these questions and he was like, obviously, the whatchamacallit. My kids loved it, it's huge, we all shared it. It was amazing, easy, loved it. Janelle asks if I do YouTube full time, what motivates me to post regularly? And I do I see myself doing this long term? How would I feel if my children wanted to do YouTube when they're older? So no, I have literally about half a day a week to do YouTube. I film as many videos as I can in that half day. And then I edit, as I said, in the evenings. Um, I think what motivates me is, is I just do enjoy it. And I know that you have to be regular and consistent on YouTube to um, you know, get subscribers and get people watching and to kind of hit all of YouTube's little triggers that helps you be seen by people so 
that's kind of for me if i was if i'm gonna do something i always want to do it as well as i can so that kind of really motivates me um long term i'm not sure i think for me it was just always something i just wanted to see how it went and it will i'll carry on doing it as long as i'm enjoying it and as long as people are enjoying it that's how long i'm planning to continue for just kind of playing it by ear if that makes sense for my for me my kids i mean i think about it all the time with sport because myself and my husband are both very sporty and um, so for me that's important that they do whatever makes them happy what i don't like is when you hear kids saying oh, i want to be a youtuber because they want to be famous um, or they want to be a singer or an actor because they want to be a celebrity and I think if that's your passion and you're passionate and you have something that you want to make YouTube videos about to share with people of course I would support that absolutely um, and the same thing you know if you want to be an athlete and that's your dream and you want to go to the Olympics or if you want to be a singer and that's what you're obsessed with singing day in day out that's all you want to do I would support any of those dreams as long as they were coming from the actual dream itself and not the result or not what comes with that because none of that is guaranteed susie says what have you learned about yourself since starting youtube which is an amazing question has the hobby made you a better person or has it changed your personal life and what do the kids say when they see your videos thank you susie i think i'm actually stronger than i give myself credit for i think when i first started youtube i thought that the hate comments and the abuse that you get that i just wouldn't I just wouldn't cope with it and it would be I'd be crying and like I would quit within a few weeks and um, was actually although it does affect me and it does upset me and I do hate all that stuff um, I'm still here and I'm still going so I feel like I have done better with that than maybe I would have thought that I could um, my kids they only very rarely see my videos like if I'm uploading something or if I'm checking something and I just check it on my phone see if it's working all that kind of stuff they don't think a huge amount of it. They, they're quite used to seeing my husband is like always on the TV and interviews and stuff and on the news. And um, so they are quite used to seeing us on the TV and on, you know, screens and things. So I don't think they necessarily think that much of it or even know what it is. They're too young, I guess. Karen says, just wondering what kind of job um, you had to let go of. What kind of work does your husband do? Um, so I've kind of already talked about my job. My husband works in the same kind of industry. Um, he started off as a SNC coach, um, but he's now like the big boss um, working with the sport. He's like the head of performance, so he works kind of in like the management of a Olympic sport. Pam says, if you lost all your makeup, what would you buy again? I guess the short answer, Pam, is all of it. What I would have to buy like immediately would be my Monsieur Big, my Dior backstage. I'd have to buy my Too Faced chocolate gold bronzer what else could i not live beauty blender i'd have to buy that immediately can't live without it Catherine says do you have any favorite brands you are loyal to i wouldn't say i'm loyal to anyone as far as makeup Catherine. i am very fickle i go wherever the shiny things take me rbk says where do you see yourself in five years time so i think for me in five years time it's hard to think about because my whole life really revolves around my kids by that time they'll both be in school so i guess the the short answer is i don't know exactly but it will be more like my time again because they'll both be in school and that'll give me obviously a lot more of my time and my life back whatever that is at that time i don't even know where we'll be agnishka says what started your passion for makeup do you do makeup on your friends and family? So I think I've already just, I kind of talked about my passion for makeup, but do I do makeup on my friends and family? Very rarely. I did my sister's makeup for her wedding. So we did a couple of practices for her, um, which was really easy because she was able to just literally tell me exactly what she did and didn't like. And we worked on it together. So it was perfect. Um, I did my mum's makeup for her birthday the other week as a treat, but not very often. If, I, if someone asked me to, I probably would, but I'm not a makeup artist. I'm not used to doing anyone's makeup but my own. So I wouldn't necessarily go around offering because I don't know if I'm really qualified, to be honest. Lucia says, where have you lived all your life? Where would you like to move to? What made me divorce my ex? 
Uh, so um, where have I lived all my life? Most of my life I've been in the southwest of England, which is like the leafy countryside of England. Um, where would I like to move to? I've kind of always been obsessed with moving to Australia because I used to um, spend a lot of time there when I was swimming and I've always loved it. But for now, with my kids being really young, I would never really want to take them away from their grandparents and our family and our friends. So I'm probably pretty happy where I am, to be honest, for now, as far as I know. So my divorce is a very long story as far as all of the ins and outs of what happened there. So if you guys are really, you know, interested in that, you want a story time with that, how, you know, I coped with it, everything that happened, how I came out the other side to meeting my husband, I can absolutely do a whole video on that because it is a very long, complex story to quickly cover here, if that makes sense. Um, but if you guys think that would be helpful, if you've been through something similar um, or you're just a bit nosy, we can absolutely do that. The short story is that my ex-husband had an affair and left me for the woman that he had the affair with. So although I did divorce him, it was not my choice. Um, it was not what um, obviously I instigated or anything as to, related to my feelings or anything like that. It was very sudden, very shocking and very brutal um yeah that's the short answer really but if you want more of a story time about that let me know in the comments we can absolutely do that so Rado Rad radona radona um, asks have i ever been to america would i ever go and where in the us would i visit so i have never been it is like probably my number one place I've never been that I would love to go. As my kids, I'd love to go to Florida and like all the theme parks, Disneyland, stuff like that. Um, I've heard that Santa Monica is an amazing place to go. I've heard that San Diego is amazing. I'd love to go to Vegas for a couple of days. So Helen says, you've spoken about your own sporting background and working with young athletes. So sport and fitness is obviously important to you. Would I consider incorporating that into my channel? Because Helen would love some realistic fitness lifestyle tips. So I have done one video previously on how I lost my like baby weight, my post pregnancy body, how I got back in shape and all that kind of stuff. Um, I wouldn't, it hasn't really occurred to me include, to include it because it is kind of separate. So I do do the odd thing. And to be honest, that video was not popular. It was not a particularly successful video. So it hasn't really occurred to me to do something along those lines again. But if people are interested in that, um, you know, like a what I eat in a week vid type video, something like that, then please let me know down below. I'd definitely be happy to do that if you guys want to see more of that. Jade, beautiful Jade, asks, what brand has the most products that I love in general and what brand has the fewest that have worked for you? I have never really been disappointed in a Huda Beauty product. I love Anastasia products. Again, never had a bad one from them. Too Faced is become, is really getting up there for me lately. They've got my number one concealer. I love their GU foundation. I love their bronzers, are my favorite bronzers. So that would be up there as well. I think the one that probably has the least that's worked for me is maybe Benefit. They like, they. like I feel like their products are very hit and miss. They have amazing brow products, amazing mascaras, but I've also had some disappointments from them. Rhea asks, what's your family situation? Do you have a regular job and what got you into makeup? So I think I've answered almost all of those questions, Rhea, in previous answers. But yeah, so we reiterate, so I'm married and I have two young babies. Yes, I do have a regular job and I think we've covered the makeup. I've just always enjoyed it, to be honest. Ada asks, what um, are my worst date stories slash embarrassing moments? Do you know what, Ada? I wouldn't consider myself to have ever been on a date. My like boyfriends and my husband, they were people that I knew either at school or at work that I met and had a relationship with um, and that turned into something more. Like I never like dated like that to have bad date stories, do you know? I've only really been on dates with people who are like already my boyfriend, so 
I really don't have any like bad date stories. Um, embarrassing moments. I have a whole video about embarrassing things that my kids have done and that is my main source of embarrassment recently is is my kids and the things that they say but the most recent one i can think of is when we were at like a farm there were some horses in the field and we were just looking at them and like stroking them there were lots of people around um, and she asked very very loudly while pointing at the horse's willy mummy what is that massive black thing Maria asks, if I have dry skin, do I need to set my face with powder or leave it? I don't think you need to set your face. Obviously, if you have very oily skin, you're trying to keep your oil at bay as long as possible. That's why lots of people with oily skin really love to set or even bake their face. I have normal skin and I never set my face. I don't feel like I need to. Jane says, I really want to upload my first makeup video, but I haven't plucked up the courage. What advice would you give to help me just go for it? So honestly, Jane, you've just got to do it, to be honest. I think you just got to kind of think what's the worst that could happen. Like maybe not that many people watch it. Maybe it's not that good. I know my first video is really, really not that good. I've actually deleted a load of my very first videos because I'm no longer happy with them or proud of them. Um, and obviously you will come a long way and you will learn and get better and better and better. It just doesn't matter. Just do it. I feel like when you look back on your life, are you going to look back and, and wish you hadn't uploaded a makeup video? I wouldn't have thought so. Are you going to look back and wish you had given something a go that you were interested in? Very possibly. So I feel like if you want to do something, if you want to give something a try, don't let anything stop you just do it. Shira asks, how do people that I work with or in a professional relationship react to the fact that you've got a YouTube channel or do you rather not tell them? If you do, what do you say? I don't generally sort of go around telling people about it, but obviously if people ask what I've been up to or what I do, yeah, I always tell them. Most people that I know or that I work with know about it. And do you know what? It's just such a different world. Obviously, working in elite sport, it's like makeup could not really be further from that environment. Um, so no one I work with really is that familiar with YouTube or certainly not in like the beauty community world. So they are, some of them are quite interested and want to ask about it or ask how it works or what it is. Some of them have no idea what it is. Um, but yeah, I mean, none of them are like particularly that interested in it because it's just completely different from their world. Cherish My Closet says, what's a typical day for you and what's a typical day for you filming? Now that my job has kind of changed, my daughter started school. Um, so I have school run. Uh, in the morning and in the afternoon every day so my filming day is now changed to like be set on a Monday and I don't have enough time to film and edit so I will just film two or three videos if I can and then I'll edit them throughout the week in the evenings um, and I try like I said to save up as many as possible and just kind of do it as and when I can but for me personally to not get stressed and worried I just really like to have my week scheduled out I kind of look one week at a time Jessica says what kind of music do you listen to do you have any hidden talents like singing an instrument knitting etc well Jessica I am actually an incredible undiscovered vocal artist I don't want to like put people I don't want to make people feel bad or like inferior when they hear my voice so I try to just keep it you know personal to me but I do rock a mean bedtime lullaby I wouldn't necessarily call it a talent but I can knit and I knitted my little boy's um, whole coming home outfit which I was very very proud of I knit, an, I knit a mean hat a mean hat so I will say that my mum taught me to knit when I was really really young I think I was probably like 10 or 11 and my mum first taught me to knit just like to do just knit like a scarf and the very last question comes from the beautiful Bethany who says what steps of your makeup routine are worth spending more money on I think we touched on this earlier but for me 100% your base I would say with foundation and primer and concealer and probably powder as well so your core base products 
And there you have it. That is my whole Q&A. I think I've answered every single question. I tried my best to, I hope I have. I really hope you enjoyed this video and getting to know all of my secrets, find out all of the nitty gritty that you guys wanted to know. And I hope to see you in a future video. Otherwise take care for now, bye 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 bye.